Uh, fellas sang about religion, and this is very important. Because I was just reading uh, Pastor Adeboye, who has just said that he wants to establish more churches so that everybody can have a church within a walking distance. Now, fellas sang about religion and the danger of religiosity as opposed to spirituality. Now, Okoye Akadina Okoye has just given a beautiful reply this morning. That what Adebayo is talking about are business centers, not religious institutions. Greetings, people. It's Mr. Paul the Trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. So the biggest question that is going to be addressed on this chapter is, should the DGOs be sent to prison? Adeboye? Oye Depo? Oya Kilome? and the other vagabonds in Nigeria? Should they be sent to prison? And if we say yes, why should they be? Indeed, people, I agree. If there's a place that these people belong to, regardless of their age, is a prison cell. This brother that, is, that you're going to listen to is called Pastor Tunde. What he emphasized on, what he spoke about, is legit. These people must be sent to prison. Because what they've done to our economies, what they've done to our people under the geese of being servants of God cannot be undone. The money, the total amount of money that these people have stolen from gullible believers is probably 200 times more than the money that armed robbers in our communities, in our societies, have stolen over a century. You people don't understand. You do not understand. Just looking at the extortion rate and the blackmailing rate that is being practiced in these uh, institutions called churches. If we just look at the figures and the numbers, before we start considering their money laundering schemes, the money that they've just siphoned from gullible believers. If all that money is put together, it can rebuild Africa. It can create job opportunities for every breathing soul in Africa. This I tell you with, uh, with confidence because it's the truth. In your personal capacity, I want you to do a calculation as an individual of how much do you estimate to have given in the form of tithes, a seed, offering, buying anointed things, stupid things like oils, water, stickers, calendars, and etc., etc., and events, the IVP programs, where they tell you that come for an IV program, an event, pay this amount of money. We are doing contributions for A, B, C, D, and E in your own personal capacity. If you can do a, cal a, a calculation, just do a, you know, a calculation and, and come up with an estimation of how much you could have spent before you decided to quit church, before you decided to call it quits, or if you're still going to these shrines, or if you're still in Adeboye, or Edepo, or Yakilome, Jeremiah Omoto, or if you're a TB Joshua follower, just do an estimation of how much you've spent so far. Whatever number that you get to, let's make it the average. And now let's put into perspective, let's put into question the number of people that follow these people, that are also doing the same, that have also spent the same amount of money. Maybe you joined a year later. Maybe you joined recently, two years ago. Also put into consideration those that started with them. The figures are, are crazy. They are alarming that you come up with. And you ask yourself a question. With all that money that has been given, what have they done for the people other than promising people things will change? That's the only message that they trade on. That if you do this for good, if you, I mean, if you do this for God, if you try God, but if you rob God, things will not work for you. But if you try God with all that you have, you'll see how your life will be transformed. That's their message of hope. 
They've packaged this hope thing so good that they've made it so attractive. Even to the most stubborn person. They've made this hope thing more attractive than investing in buying stock, in putting your money where there will be a visible return on investment. They've made this hope thing, this religious thing, more attractive. And by that, they've colonized and captured the minds of people and gave people a soft, a soft lending kind of a belief system to say, if I just put this million in this, in this ministry, if I just give to this man of God this amount of money, all my things will be on autopilot. God is going to open the floodgates of blessings and everything, the contracts that I want, the marriage that I want, will eventually start coming to me because I've sacrificed for God. That's the philosophy that they've traded on. That's how they've managed to use things of the spirituality to manipulate you, to guilt trap you into thinking that you're doing this for God. Because Africans, we fear God so much and we're willing so much to do everything for God, which is a good thing. But the way God has been represented by these people is not the God of the Bible. Do you know how many people follow these Jagabans, these Oyedepo, these Adeboyas, these your pastors in Nigeria, or all the other pastors around the world, but we are focusing on African prophets and pastors? The Oyedepos have huge followings. People on the ground. 20,000 people that are in attendance. Adeboya alone, more than 20,000. Oyedepo alone, He's owned more than 20 or even more than 30,000. Let's say each and every one of them is paying only 1,000 naira in each and every service as offering. Put these figures into perspective. It's important that you break down everything to the smallest detail so that you understand how much has been taken from people, so that you can understand how much has been extorted from gullibles. There's a lot of money that is being moved out of the system and it's not being accounted for. And these people are galvanized. They are not being taxed. Their operations are not being monitored, censored. They are not being audited. They are just freely conducting business without any accountability, without any transparency, because everyone is entitled to religion, to belief, because these are non-governmental organizations, they are charity organizations. These are not non-governmental organizations. These are business enterprises. They have all the characteristics and features of a business. They make more returns than the businesses that are paying tax. So how do you expect our economies to function? How do you expect a developmental projects to come up from African countries when money is being taken out of the system illegally? Apart from the money that they've stolen from people, there is another money that they are taking from our economies, from our governments. Are they taking it? No, they are just being used as vehicles because no one is watching the churches. No one investigating in the churches. No one would dare to check the financial statements of churches. So this has become a blind spot to our economies. And corrupt politicians are using churches to move money out of the country. These people have moved billions and billions and billions out of our countries, out of, the, out of circulation. And all this money, all this money that goes out of the system and is not accounted for, it always creates a deficit. And that deficit will in turn lead to unemployment, to inflation, high prices, high oil prices, fuel prices. And you people, you can't see this because you're too spiritual to come and defend your papas, your daddy GOs. Don't touch the anointed. These people are not anointed. These are crooks, man. These are thieves. Certified thieves. They're imposters. They're just using church to cover up their dirty deeds. But the revolution has to begin. And we say enough is enough. 
These are cancerous human beings. If we do not fight this fight, if we do not advocate for their arrest, Africa will never change. Africa will never move forward. I know we still have gullibles that will still defend these people, regardless of how much information or intelligence we bring to the table. They, don't, they just don't care. They are just too spiritual. They are still hoping that what they were promised by these charlatans is going to manifest one day or the other. But it's never going to manifest. There is nothing that these people have told you that will ever manifest. Nothing. So I want you to listen to what this pastor said, who is also advocating for them to go to prison because they are criminals. That's what they really are. If we are going to audit the, the financial statements of these people, people, they will be in uproar. You will become angry. And there's nothing wrong about being angry. You will become angry. You will start contesting and protesting to go and bend down these shrines. Am I inciting violence? I'm not. But I'm just saying enough is enough. We can't have these people destroying our economies, our countries, our nations. And we need to start putting our leaders into question for them to start putting measures to regulate these institutions and to make them pay back the money, all the money that they've uh, confiscated from our systems. So I want you to listen to what uh, this pastor had to say. He's very spot on. And I second him. I agree with him. Check him out. According to his riches in glory. And then end up buying my own private jet. No, my own God is different. He does not supply anybody's needs for them to contribute it into the pockets of robbers and marauders. And it's a sin. It is sin to keep quiet and allow God's supplies to go to waste. Such prayers are most screen for their complicity. And I'm talking of the men, a call out, whatever you call them. I'm talking of church leaders. It is most screen for their complicity in the whole affair of sanctification of the role of political power, which has been turned to weeks of the whole world, and which the flock of God, the people of our nation, have been endlessly and neglectlessly beaten. The hottest part of the hell is reserved for preachers who take advantage of the people of God. In First Kings chapter number four, please, man, because this is the root of our problem. All general overseers must go to prison. I am not joking. I said so in the open many years ago. During the convention of Mike Kokongo, I said, lock Adeboye up, lock Kui up, lock the Polisaka for up, lock, all this, lock me up also. By the time we finish, Nigeria will change. I have a reason for saying so. In first things chapter four, I know I'll be quoted tomorrow, I'm ready for their war. If the revolution does not begin in the church, it cannot spread. If it does not begin in the mosque, it cannot spread. I am telling you, except those institutions change, Nigeria will never change. They control the soul and minds of millions of people. <laughs> Democracy is preceded by revolution and then development. And when people have their voice restored back to them, they can then determine who will represent them. We have put the cart before the horse. That revolution must begin. It must begin with you, it must begin with me. And listen, I salute the courage of leaders of Mandeko and people who have risen to fight in this nation. I salute the heroes of our past leaders and of God knows the sacrifice. The reason we are clamoring to say before we change is because if it is not safe, there will be nothing to change. I began to hear something like, let's go our separate ways. That's what I'm fighting. That we can still salvage our national unity and cohesion and still remain one country where we change values and different parameters than that which we have received either to. By the grace of God, Almighty God, who spoke, 
You know, even Solomon himself said, All that have amassed, who knows who will inherit it from me if you will not be a fool? <laughs> and Rehoboam became a fool. He was from the third generation that the revolution hit. And they said to your tent, O Israel. But there is still Israel today. That's why I know Nigeria will be saved. Nigeria will be changed. And Nigeria will become great in our lifetime. But this is the way we are going. When Solomon died, he sent Adoniram to go and collect tributes. They stoned him to death. Yes. Beginning from your church and your mosque. Yes. Ask your leaders where are they getting the money they are spending lavishly for. If it's not from the contribution of the saints, it will be from Abuja. Next service, take stones to church. <laughs> Their children and carry the revolution to Ambassador's gate. Carry the revolution to all these men who are oppressing us. I think December is too late. I think January is too far. This one in Castle, we must have an anniversary of the movement of the people in January and arrange another lecture. We have done enough lecture. We have done enough talking. They do not have what it takes to arrest all of us and imprison all of us. Some people must live off for some spent generation. I challenge you to rise. I challenge you to fight. I challenge you that the revolution will begin. You have a fight by any way that will push these oppressors out of our line. We are saying no to corruption, no to oppression. So with that being said, I'll check you out on the next episode of the Enlightenment series. It's Mr. Pull the Trigger. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. Just don't forget to do something. I'm out.